Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share my first look at the Sony ZV-1. This camera will officially start shipping on June 11th, 2020, and I just received my review unit from Sony today on June 5th. So it will launch at 749 US and eventually make its way up to 799. If you're wondering why it's so expensive, even though it's not an RX100, I actually think this camera is a bit of a value if you know it is the right fit for you. Because essentially what you're getting is uh, the RX100 Mark 7's sensor and performance in a cyber shot body. I say that because this is not a magnesium uh, body. This is a polycarbonate one, no weather sealing. And then you're getting the lens from the RX100 Mark 5A. That means 24 to 70 millimeters, F1.8 with an ND filter. But that's not where the party uh, begins or ends. Just for a point of comparison, here's the RX100 Mark V. You can see that it is a metal build. This is not, but both are wearing the Zeiss logo and both again have that best in class one inch sensor. However, this older five does not have the real time tracking. It does not have active steady shot, which means when you're shooting 4K video with this camera, you actually can get truly stabilized video, even though it is going to crop it. That's a big deal. Something that we only just saw in the RX100 Mark VII. So it's actually made its way to a less expensive camera. And that to me is very exciting. But that's not what the Mark VII, or excuse me, the ZV-1 is all about. The ZV-1 is all about the complete redesign. This is a new product after all. As you can see on the top of the camera, we now have a hot shoe where the EVF, the pop-up EVF, is commonly found on the RX100 lineup. I'll bring the five over so you can see that. Uh, pop-up uh, over there on the left, so with an RX100, technically that's where your EVF is. It's not in this camera, so that's one of the corners that were cut besides the fact that it is not a weather-sealed uh, metal body. Uh, we also have a new microphone that is supposed to be very good. We'll see how it is, which means you don't need to have uh, a mic attached to it, but because you've got a hot shoe and a microphone jack, you do have that ability. Uh, in addition to that, the buttons, completely different. No mode dial, we have a mode button. Uh, the power button in the same position that you'd find on the RX100 uh, over here, uh, the shutter button and the actual uh, you know, jog dial for zooming in and out, all the same, but we have a dedicated video record button now on the top as well as a defocus button. So if you want to blur the background, you don't have to do anything technical, you just have to press this button. So great for vloggers. Again, Sony just thinking of what vloggers and YouTubers are looking for and Part of the reason this camera doesn't have a flash is because it is so video centric. Now, even though it is uh, a DSC model, meaning it's a digital still camera, I do feel like this is more of a video first device. And then of course, we now for the first time have a flip out display that comes around uh, the side rather than you know above the body. So with all of the RX100s of years past, I mentioned you have a flash here, that flash is gone. Uh, and what they implemented years ago was a flip around display like this for selfies, uh, for video, shooting yourself on video. And this was all viable and worked well. But uh, again, when it comes to accessories, Sony learned with the RX100, or excuse me, with the A6400 uh, that people were having to work around the fact that they wanted to attach accessories, but they would block the display. So Sony now has implemented a swivel display on the side. It is not a touch screen in full functionality. It's the touch screens that if you're a Sony user, you're already used to in that it will allow you to select a point of focus, but that is it. So you're not going to be able to navigate menus or make any selections with your finger on this display. I wish you could. That's not part of what we're getting. We do have a physical grip, which is nice, but again, not unheard of in the non RX 100 world. Cyber shots have had grips before, and even though they're not calling this a cyber shot, again, that's what I very much feel it reminds me personally of, uh, but it's a new product category altogether. Now, if you pair it with the Bluetooth grip that it's attached to right now, it's kind of a dream pairing because this is a tripod as well. Uh, with active steady shot, that means you can actually walk around and vlog with this in 4K. Yes, it will crop the image in order to stabilize it, uh, but that cropped 4K video is actually going to be usable in the same way or performance that you get with action cameras, except here you're going to get much better quality, and that is important. 
Okay, active steady shot up until this camera only existed for video in the RX100 Mark VII, which is a much more expensive camera than this. But of course, it's an RX100 with a longer lens, and I'm sure that the Mark VIII is going to have a laundry list of features now that we have something like this at a lower price. In fact, I wouldn't be shocked if on the RX100 Mark VIII, we see a display that flips out around the side. And of course, as you flip it, uh, the orientation of the display changes with that. So what else do you need to know about this camera? Uh, overheating on video recording is supposed to be better, so that's certainly a good thing. Uh, the autofocus, as I mentioned, the real-time tracking should be the game changer. I mean, uh, it also has a, a feature as well uh, referred to as a product showcase, again, designed specifically to target uh, vloggers and YouTubers that are trying to show off a product and bring it into focus, you know, rather than their face. So when they're on camera and they want to show you something, it immediately tracks and goes to that. And that's one of the advantages of having real-time tracking. So I'm expecting good things uh, when it comes to autofocus on this for obvious reasons, because again, it's got the internals of the Mark VII, uh, but the lens of the, you know, the 5A, as I mentioned. And that's all good. And you can see right now it's filming. It's got some of my hair, the camera, uh, and I'm recording this with the same one inch sensor, although granted older because it's in the video camera capacity. Uh, and that's what's really unique about this is that you now have something that is very much a video camera in many senses, even though the clips are limited to five minutes, you can lift uh, that threshold for the heat because that is what the limitations are all about. It's overheating, right? And the fact that now the screen does completely move away from the body certainly helps because this isn't gonna get as hot. I mean, I can't tell you how many videos and uh, posts I've seen where people are trying to cool off these cameras uh, by getting the screen as far away from the body as you possibly can. Now, I do still feel the RX100 is clearly uh, the best of both worlds, meaning still and video. This is more video centric. That doesn't mean it doesn't have still chops. It does, uh, it absolutely does. But just to give you one example, while this new designed flip to the side screen is nice, but certainly nothing new in the world of cameras, uh, when you're filming yourself, if you're looking over at this screen, the lens is going to give that away. Uh, the above, the overhead flip up, I think was better execution, but left for less, less flexibility in video in terms of attaching anything up here at the top. So it's gonna be interesting, not just to see what the microphone quality is like, but also, if it works in tandem with Sony's shotgun mic, I'm going to be very curious about the performance there. Uh, in addition to that, one downside to having this screen is that you can't, you know, turn it or position it, articulate it the way you could here. So if you were interested, for example, in taking low profile shots, you know, you could move the screen around to where you wanted it. You know, this is giving you more flexibility in terms of as a still camera, and possibly overall, this is clearly tailored to one thing, which is filming yourself. I mean, that's the only reason that you would want a display like this. And then of course, freeing up the top. As I mentioned, Sony learned with the A6400 when Chinese manufacturers started making, you know, attachments essentially to give you a hot shoe away from the screen so it wouldn't block the display. I love that they've created a dedicated video record button. The defocus thing is just a good feature. Not having a mode dial isn't gonna phase a lot of you. Uh, some of you probably have never even used your mode dial, so that's not gonna be uh, something you're missing. But if you're looking for more manual control, if you want the nicety of having an EVF and a flash and an actual uh, ring that can control focus or zoom on the body, you're still going to need an RX100. So before everyone runs out saying, this has put a bullet in the RX100, I assure you it hasn't. I mean, this is clearly targeting a very specific market, which is again, influencers, YouTubers, vloggers. And for that, it seems like the perfect solution. Of course, I've got to test it out. It's not going to, going to be a perfect camera, but already, as I mentioned, just knowing that the screen cannot move up or down, but only to the side, uh, that already tells you that it doesn't have the versatility that you'll find in an RX100 from years past. But it does again have the latest refinements of the RX100 Mark VII when it comes to sensor, performance, autofocus, real-time tracking, all of those things, uh, S-Log, you know, things that don't exist on other uh, RX100 cameras. Uh, if you go back to the Mark V, you're not going to have real-time tracking. You won't even have it on the Mark VI. 
Uh, so these are important things to know. Uh, the Bluetooth grip that works here with this camera so that you can uh, control the zoom, uh, control taking a picture, recording video, and customizing that C1 to whatever you'd like it to be, this isn't going to work with the Mark 5A. It's only going to work seamlessly with the Mark 7. In fact, it does not work seamlessly with the Mark 6. So before you run out and buy this for an older camera, remember it may not be compatible. But I like everything they've done here. I mean, when you look at the back of the body, things are almost identical, right? Pretty much, pretty much, except no more ridiculous uh, corner tiny record button. So I expect to see some of these changes uh, on the latest uh, Gen RX100. So this is a cool preview of that in a sense, in my opinion as well. Uh, but I'll put it through the paces. We'll see how it performs. Uh, we'll see if it's actually more enjoyable to use uh, than an RX100. In my opinion, I've covered every single RX100 that has ever existed. So I'm definitely well versed to give you that opinion. Uh, this is, in my opinion, definitely uh, designed for those of you that just want to pick it up and go. You're not interested in settings. You're fine with living in auto. And I don't think it's a bad thing that Sony put this together. I think it's actually very smart. And it should eventually, as per Sony, have webcam capability. If you want to use this as a webcam, again, kind of the perfect quarantine camera for vlogging and uh, communicating with other people, they will be pushing out an update to my knowledge. Uh, on the side, I didn't mention this, uh, but I'll go through it right now. We do have a microphone input as well as Sony's old multi-port, AKA micro USB and then HDMI output. Now, there is no way to monitor audio. Curious, considering it's a vlogging camera, but I guess they figure you're not going to have an earpiece or someone else recording for you, monitoring. Still, it would have been nice to have it, but I can understand why it's not there. Again, at $750 or even $800, it's very cool that we have a new product, again, its own category, that isn't an RX with all of the capability of an RX, but of course, many corners cut, but also many features brought to it uh, that you wouldn't find otherwise. I mean, really my favorite part of this screen, besides the obvious, is that when you want to close it up, it's protected and it does shut the camera down, uh, as does folding it out, turn the camera on. Uh, so it's got a lot going for it. We'll see what performance is like. I, of course, will be doing a direct comparison to the RX100 line. I'll also incorporate uh, my thoughts with the Insta360 ONE R, which does have a one inch sensor, but of course doesn't have any of the capability overall that this does, but it does have the opposite, which is the ability to get wet, uh, something that this just cannot do. And I think that's a big deal um, because you know even though the RX100s are weather sealed, you don't wanna get these wet and take a risk. So the fact that this isn't weather sealed just tells me that if this gets wet, you're probably up the creek, uh, but overall, Again, a very interesting new product from Sony that they are not reinventing the wheel here, but they are taking the best of what they have already refined and putting it to a specific purpose. I mean, this is a little bit bigger, uh, a little, not heavier, about the same weight as the Mark V that I have here, but it's a little thicker. And yes, as I said, it's missing the EVF, it's missing the flash, but it has so much going for it just in the fact that it has better autofocus, new color science. I didn't mention that. That's another thing uh, that it has that will best most previous gen RX 100s. And the RX 100 that I have here, of course, only has, uh, you know, the HDMI uh, as well as the micro USB port. No microphone jack here. Uh, that's just not part of what uh, previous generations had. Of course, the Mark 7 sports it all. So exciting to share this with all of you. It's rare that I see Sony launch a literally new product category, but I'm not shocked to see this. And their timing couldn't be better. And the cost is smart as well, because right now, uh, you know, who's really earning a living these days? I mean, unemployment, sky high, uh, for good reason. If you want to stay safe, you pretty much do have to stay home uh, in spite of everything opening up, not getting into that now. Hopefully everyone continues to stay as safe as they possibly can. Um, so that pretty much wraps it up. Again, a first look at the ZV-1. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. Hit that like button. And as usual, please feel free to subscribe and please stay safe. Later.